Um, my name is Derek Eskins. I work for a company called Object Partners here in town. We are hiring if anybody's looking. Um, if you want to follow along, there's a uh, URL for you to go to. This is a QR code slideshow. Uh, there's some cool things to you. Doing development for like 13 years now. I've been a father for about seven years. And pretty much as soon as my daughter was born, I was kind of interested in getting her familiar with technology and programming. Um, and obviously, there's a big focus on STEM recently. Having a daughter, I find it kind of even more important. There's just not enough kind of representation in these areas. So when I First, started doing research into what I can do to kind of get her into this. I mean, books are kind of your first thought of what options are, but that's not really great for somebody who's six or seven trying to get into this stuff. So there's Scratch. Uh, most people have heard of Scratch. It's pretty cool. Um, its foundation's really nice because there's kind of this drag and drop model of these puzzle pieces together, they can only fit in the ways that actually work, and you get to tweak the parameters. Um, some things that I don't think about Scratch are, it can feel a little bit overwhelming, um, just with kind of the sheer magnitude of all these different options you have on here. And it's also very procedural. There's like a, usually a definite start and end <coughs> to all the Scratch applications. And it's kind of ugly. <laughs> maybe maybe a four or five year old or the bright bright colors it's kind of nice but I don't really like it um, the Scratch Junior which is an iOS app for little kids uh, to get them kind of started my daughter's a little too old for this um, there's code.org code.org much nicer design this still the same kind of puzzle logic that Scratch had brilliant in the fact that they decided to use licensed content to really kind of grab kids' attentions. Because um, that's one of the hard parts, right? Your kids have a lot of it kind of enthusiasm at first, but over time it kind of remains down. Uh, and then the Hour of Code, uh, my daughter actually this at school, and again, great kind of use of licensed characters to pull kids in and get more interested in these things. My daughter actually played with this quite a bit until she hit a wall where she couldn't design the snowflakes that she wanted to do because they just give you these limited set of instructions that you can uh, utilize. So last year there was a Kickstarter called Bitsbox and this kind of really grabbed me when I saw it. The way that they're getting around that kind of lack of enthusiasm over time is they send your kid a package in the mail once a month. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid and I got a package in the mail, that was pretty, pretty awesome. And it's not just like a little package, there's a bunch of stuff in here. And they put stickers, sometimes they'll have toys in there, and it comes with this little booklet. Little booklet, this is another thing that I like about their uh, system that they have. They're not going to be dragging and dropping puzzle pieces. They actually have to type code. The booklet tells you exactly what you have to type. It's kind of like the old school way of doing it. You get uh, like a Dr. Dobbs in the mail and type out whatever was in the back of the magazine. They're going to have to do the same thing. They're not very big, but um, they get them going. This is what the uh, IDE basically looks like. You go to the website, you have a coding space, you have kind of an emulated tablet over there. You get a customized tablet by their favorite color, you use it. And then, again, another brilliant move, they can share their app. You pull up a QR code, scan it, and it pulls up the app on your mobile device. And they have awesome design and great culture. So, I signed up for the Kickstarter. They sent my daughter a stocking stuffer for the holidays. Inside of it, she had a golden ticket that basically got her beta access to the site. The little code <coughs> in there, and she loved the fact that she had to put her code in to get it started. So this is kind of the hello world. Um, the emulator app comes with some kind of default 
uh, starter apps on it that they walk you through, and they'll give you kind of step-by-step -step, type this in, type that in. But then, as you're going along, they give you a challenge. They say, okay, you've already put in Hello World, can you make code say something else? They don't really give you instructions on what exactly you have to do. So it's kind of that exploratory nature. And if you need a hint, they provide it to you. You can click on it, and they'll give you an idea of what to put in there. Um, but you can see they're putting in actual functions, actual code. They're getting used to that kind of process of typing. And they move you along pretty quickly. This was project number four in the stocking stuffer that they sent her. It was um, go ahead and build this kind of cool little shooter app where this guy goes across here and he shoots up and tries to zap the alien. And they're using functions. Um, and the other part that I like about this is you can <coughs> customize the app after you're done, right? She did what they told her to do, but after playing around with it a little bit, she didn't want her rocket to be limited to being on the ground. She wanted it to go all over the screen. And she wanted it to be contra. <laughs> we played around with it a little bit, and they have sounds that you can add. So as you are playing it, hear the sounds. Oh man, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I don't know how you cannot like that. It creates a lot of enthusiasm. <coughs> if you look at the gist that we have up here, I mean, this is 50 lines of code. And my daughter did the majority of this. I mean, I helped her, obviously, but she typed the majority of this out. and. It was a good learning experience of when we, she wanted the three different shots, we kind of went through the, how you would do that, and we, I showed her, okay, well this repeating code, we can move that out into a function, and she was able to actually understand quite a bit of it. Um, <laughs> you'll see when I explained variables to her, she wanted to call her rocket Bob. <laughs> 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 uh, and there's, there's a lot of functionality that they give you in here. So I created a small little function app, and you can see kind of the different things that you can do. You can change the background. They have these things called stamps that are basically all the icons. You can change the size of them. So you can, if you look at the, uh, the, up there where we have stamp burger, you just add a couple more parameters, and you can change the uh, size of it. Uh, all the stamps have kind of different functionality. There's a global tap function that you can override. So when I tap on it, uh, big burger goes to wherever it was. There's two small burgers. I tell them to rotate. They rotate in the same direction. I tell one to go down. That goes down relative to the direction that it is. I tell the other one to go south, and it goes. There's a continuous loop function in here that evaluates 20 times a second. I say when that second burger is below the screen, go ahead and move it back up to the top. Uh, you can do a move with or without animation, so this big burger is moving with an animation. Uh, you can, on tap of a particular item, create sounds. Uh, you watch the moon down there, show and hide them. For some reason, every stamp can explode. <laughs> There's a Z index, so you can actually have stamps hide behind each other. And there's also a sing function on any stamp. And there's a global drag function, so you can go ahead and do something on drag. It's, and this will all work on phones, and it's really cool. Um, and it's JavaScript. Under, this, uh, under the covers, this is all JavaScript. So when we found the sounds, I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. And it, 
bring kind of more excitement to my daughter when she was doing it. But there were so many sounds, I wanted her to have a way that she could see them all. So I basically wanted to create an app that went and showed her all the different sounds. The problem with this was on application load, they only load a certain subset of sounds, and if you try and use their sound function to play it, it'll say, sorry, I don't know what, where that sound is, even though the files are on their servers. Um, so if you go digging around in the source code, I found this sound manager that had a create sound. You can give it a file and a location, and it'll go ahead and load up the sound. <coughs> so you could actually go ahead and play around with that. So she had lots of fun kind of just going in here and listening to different sounds. That's <laughs> <laughs> the mustache one. <laughs> Uh, and all this is running off of a Firebase uh, I.O. backend, so that's kind of how they're uh, pushing information back and forth. Uh, so some of the things that I kind of learned from this process, obviously be patient. She's seven, you can't expect the world. Um, time is also kind of a thing. About 20 minutes at a time is kind of her cap. Um, one thing that it helped was to remember that it's a language, just like English. She understands the verbs and nouns from English. She understands commas and periods. So having those punctuations and different kind of concepts in a programming language, you can kind of relate to it. It helped her understand it. Um, let them experiment and fail. This was kind of a difficult one for me because I kind of like to shoulder surfer. If I see her doing something wrong, I want to kind of catch her early and tell her. But it's actually better to just let her experiment, let her fail. Let her wait until she gets frustrated and then come and work together with it. Uh, I think it's good for the learning process. Um, another thing that helped kind of solidify things in her mind was to have her explain different things. So with that stamp one where there's two numbers at the end of it, make her explain what those numbers are for so you know that she knows what they do. She can tell you exactly <laughs> it's how far over and how far down the stamp's going to appear. Um, and then having her teach it to somebody else. Uh, over this past weekend, she was teaching her uncle how to build basically a Hello World app. It was kind of cool. Um, have fun. And this last one, it's kind of to encourage the exploration and thought. Um, wouldn't it be cool if your rocket could shoot eight ways? And just kind of putting those seeds in their brains to kind of uh, give them ideas of what else they can do to make that app even better. Um, final thought here, screen time. This is really tough being in, in IT, like I'm on a screen constantly. I think about something like this, what, what is better, an hour of coding and four hours of reading or vice versa? Well, in my mind, it's a little bit of a creation versus consumption scenario kind of have a lot more leniency if you're creating something versus just sitting around and watching something. Um, Minecraft is a really weird fine line because you <laughs> <laughs> are creating something, but it's kind of a scare box at the same time. So uh, I have a bunch of links on here, including links to the gist. Um, I'll show you this one last app on here. This is off of their uh, Examples. I've got this crazy guy. Oh man! <laughs> and like going back to the comparison with Scratch, I don't know how easy it would be to make something like this with Scratch. Uh, and they did it in like ten lines of code there, so it's pretty cool. Uh, anybody have any questions? Don't close that yet. <laughs> okay. That's it. Thank you.